Hi, I'm Charlie McGuffin, and today we'll be starting a little series on David Williams, The World's Worst Poems by Mr. Well, David Williams, and illustrated by Tony Boy. Starting with Barry Bobber, the dad who is not the brightest spark. Barry Bobber, to say Barry Bobber looked like King Kong would be unkind to King Kong. This beast of a man had a cornflower ear, again this is unkind to cornflowers, I'm thinking, I'm thinking then tree trunks, a super wide neck, actually wider than his head. Think the size of ironing boards, a buzz cut, a broken nose, a toothless smile, stumble as rough as sandpaper, fires bursting out of his jeans. But his brain was the size of a ping pong ball. Whenever he was called upon to use it, such as when asked to spell his own name, he would cry, My bullets. Fortunately, most of the time, Barry didn't have to, didn't have to use his brain. That's because his job was all about how big his muscles were. Barry was a strong man. He competed with other strong men all over the country to see who was the strongest strong man of them all. In these contests, the strong men would, Oi! Put this bus down and try to get to work! Lift a double digger bus over their heads. Wrestle a rhinoceros. Woo! Pull a tree out of the ground. Yank! Eat a tank. <laughs> Perform a squat lift while holding a rhinoceros. I mean, a waltz. What? Run a race with a freezer, fridge freezer strapped to their back. Grunt! Flip a fire engine over. Smash! Do a staring contest with a hamster. Snap a train carriage in half. Crunch! Do a tug of war with an airplane as a trap to take off. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm trying to go on holiday. Will you just, will you please uh, go? Just like Barry, all the other famous strong men look as, looked as if they had been inflated. There was Mickey Might, famous for competing in only a pair of very tight red underpants. Chance Carnage, he ate a shark for breakfast. Vince Vicious, legend has it that he had once headbutted a house and the house crumbled to the ground. Mongol Muscle. He only worked down in the top half, so he only had the biggest chest and the smallest, spindliest legs. The Ogre. He only spoke in grunts from both ends. Pete Punch. He could punch a hole in concrete, and often would. Go to gas. He was so wide he couldn't fit through any door. Dick Dents. Famous for being the cleverest and the strong man. As he once got a C, a puddle thump to thump. His fists were bigger than his head. And the one strong woman, Cloris Clout. She was the most terrifying of them all. Cloris could lift up all the strong men with one hand and an elephant in the other. Whenever Barry entered one of these strong men competitions, which, had, which happened most weekends at fun fairs and in public, uh, pub car parks, he truly had to come to his wife, Bianca and their daughter, Brian. I know what you're thinking. Who would call their daughter Brian? Barry bothered that to. The man who didn't know that Brian was a boy's name. Oh, my brain hurts! He exclaimed whenever I asked him about this. Needless to say, it was hard being a girl named Brian. But nothing was as hard as having Barry bother for a father. In a morning when frumping the gang was sitting in the shade, Barry would rip up the tree and move it somewhere else. RIP! When Mum served up an entire roast hog for Sunday lunch, Dad would eat up eat the whole thing in one gulp. <laughs> if there wasn't any room in the supermarket car park, Dad would free up a space by lifting a park car and placing it on top of on top of right on top of another crutch. When the bus left one morning without his daughter. Bar Dad yanked it back to the bus stop. Screech! Once, B Dad leapt onto a bouncy castle on a bride's building party, and all the children bounced miles into the air. Whoosh! If Barry got, if Brian got low marks in the test, Dad would storm into school and swing the teachers around by their ankles until his daughter would make was made top of the class. Whatever. Yes, it's an A plus, oh, Mr. Bomber. Please, 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 I beg you, let me go. 
Whenever Barry went to the loo, he yanked the chain on the toilet so hard that it would bring the bathroom ceiling down with it. Crumble, crash, clatter! Well, in fact, there are still ways for one of the children to come back down. At the time of writing, a boy named Leo is just re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. When Father Christmas didn't give Brian a nurse and a present, Barry Bobbin would lift up, lifting up the grotto, complete with Father Christmas, reindeer announced high in, uh, high into the air until he did. Oh ho 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 ho! If it was no food left in the house, Barry might, I mean, Dad might pull out a brick and pull a brick out of the wall and snack him that. Crunch! Christmas dinner was always an ordeal, as poor Granny would be yanked across the room and fly out the window if she dared to pull a cracker with her son. <coughs> Crash! Sadly, Barry was not the brave spark. As soon as Barry learnt Brian, so Brian soon learned that it was best not to tell her father whenever when something went wrong, and it was not, and or he was likely not to respond with brains, but with brute force. Wait, like bricks are not too steep. So you did find yourself having to eat one. Do sm smother some jam or peanut butter, but I warn you, bricks will still taste rather bricky. One afternoon, the girl returned home from school with plenty of tears. Brian, my darling, it's from her mother. What's the matter? Before she spoke, the girl, the, the girl lo looked through the window. I mean, the kitchen window into their little garden. And from there she could see her father weight lifting. He had a long ca metal car pole with a caravan on each end. Barry was pushing them up and down as he counted his reputations. A million and five, a million and six. It was sick. He couldn't hear. So the girl continued. Oh, Mum, it was the headmistress. She accused me of cheating on the, te on the exam. Did you ask, Mum? Of course not, exclaimed the girl. It was this boy, Swifty Swindle, who cheated by copying me. He was, uh, he's always doing that and getting away with that. That's awful. I'm going to have a, I need to have a wear with that woman. If you could, Mum, said the de to the girl, damning her eyes, but promise you won't tell Dad. Before she, Mum ha had a chance to answer, a huge face loomed at the kitchen window. Do 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 what? It was Barry Bopper. And judging by his expression, he was in a popper. And now he dad lines his daughter, go back to your weightlifting gear, and his wife. He's still got another million left to go. But Barry was not going to let give this up. Swords have sent my little princess, Brian. Tell me, who done this? Brian, don't tell me with the hemistress, blurted Bianca. Mum was not the brightest spark either. Mum! exclaimed Brian. You could have done it now. Sorry, love, she muttered. Well, I'm going to give that hemistress a piece of my mind. Barry declared, stomping into the kitchen. Dad, no! exclaimed Brian, holding to one of his arms. Barry, please! exclaimed Brian and Bianca. Holding to one of his legs, the beast kept on strangling forward. There was nothing that, that could hold Barry back. This was a man on a mission. He didn't have to go through the door. Doors off for whims. So instead, Barry Bobber walked straight through the door. Crunch! Boom! Dusted debris exploded everywhere. As the friend wall of the house tumbled to the ground, Brian and her mother were left coughing and spurring. <coughs> As Barry powered on through the dust cloud and down the street, a park car that were in his way got flipped onto their side. Wang! A cement mixer was tossed over his head into some poor person's front garden. Dooch! They received a brand new driveway whether they liked it or not. A rubbish truck was coming down the head with head butted. Bash! And whisked backwards. There was no story stopping Barry Bother in the meantime. The brute, the brute had reached his destination. He stood in front of the huge building and took a deep breath. Barry stomped up to the stone steps and stretched out his long arms between the columns that held up the building. Though with all his might, he pushed them asunder. Crunch! The, cl the columns cracked and tumbled to the ground. Push! The entire building began to crumble before an old lady popped her head out of an open window. Can I have you there? She called down. I am Barry Fuller! 
Shall I go and shut it down like? Yes! Forward to my daughter! Bye and bother! I didn't mean for a girl, but yeah, anyway, yes, dear. And I'm going to read revenge on this school! Did you say school, dear? Yeah, asked the old lady. Yeah! This isn't a school, dear, she replied. This is your phone son. The school is right next door. This stopped Harry in his tracks. My bullet, she exclaimed. Need to make, but we're, we're always getting that post. School is just there, dear. Sorry, I beg you! Have a nice day, dear, asked the, under the old lady as the front wall of the building cr tumbled to the ground. Crash bag roller! All the old folks were revealed in their rooms, cooing at Barry Bowles and Bobbers with Molly on their hands. Ooh, what a nice view! They serve some fresh air. Is it over tea? Meanwhile, Barry Bobber stumped off right next door to be completely sure he was in the right place. Barry shunted up at the building. Her mistress! He, after a moment, a proper looking lady popped her head out of her office window. Sky's closed! Pa she barked, patting her head. Oh, right, Barry Bobber! He shouted up. M my daughter Brian Bobber's dead! I can't leave that little girl, but don't go on! My princess is in tears! Poor Princess Bride! She never cheated on a no test. Yes, I am so, so sorry. Apologies, apologies. I made a mistake. It was Swedish winner all along. The boy has been paying attention. I just telephoned her home, but there was no answer. The front wall came down. Oh dear, I am so sorry to hear that. Now I must dash home and to catch some cartoons before I see. So I do pray tell this is the end of the matter. No, it is not, Rage Barry. I'm going to teach this school a lesson. We do the teaching here, thank you, Mr. Bobber, replied the head to mistress, mistress. Don't you make a mug at me! The school is for it! With that, the beef on her back leaned down and wedged his mighty sausage fingers underneath the building. Dad! Stop! shouted a breathless Brian who had just made it to the school gates with her mother. Both were covered from head to toe in dust. Brian, Ami Barry, please think! added Brian, Bianca. I don't think! I, I, I maybe make my brain hurt. I use the muscles, he boomed. Now stand back. Then, after a considerable amount of puffing, a considerable amount of puffing and puffing, he lifted the entire school building off the ground. Mm. Put this school down at once, ordered the headmistress, or I'll put you in detention too. You can write out a hundred lines. I must not lift the school building off the ground. No. Shy Barry, I'm not doing no detention. I'm going to put this school down where it belongs. In the bird! Holding the entire weight of the school building with his arms, he staggered across the playground to the weedy bins in the corner. <coughs> <coughs> he exclaimed in effort. The school is heavy. That's right. times heavier than two caravans. I don't think it's going to fit, Dad! Shy Brian. The her phone rang. was really strained with the weight now. Beads of sweat as big as tennis balls were pouring down his face. He looked up at the big school, huge school building, then down at the not so big bins. Even Barry Bobber could see this wasn't going to work. Do you have any bigger bins? He sh called up to the headmistress who was clinging on to, onto the window frame for dear life. No! She wailed. Now put the school down this instant! Barry was, went left, then right. And then the entire school and building began to began wobbling. Please, Dad, do the headmistress says, called Brian. Now the beans of sweat were the size of footballs. Oh, no, I don't think I can hold it, any. But before Baron could say longer, he lost his grip and the school came crashing down upon him. <laughs> Dan, called Brian as a horrified mum held her tight. There was no way he could lift the school and building, however hard he tried. Is he all right? Is he all right? Hollered the headmistress. No, he is not. Call the ambulance. Call the fire brigade. Call the police. Called Bianca. I know. Exclaimed Brian. Let's call the strong men. That's exactly what they did. And in no time, the nine strong men and one strong woman had arrived. Mickey Mike, dressed only in, in his tight red underpants. Chest Carnage, Vince Vicious, Mongol Muscle, the Ogre, Pea Punch, Gunter Gurf, Dick Dents, Thunder Fump, and Claus Clout all rushed to the scene. Once they were all there, they gathered around the school building and placed their sausage fingers beneath it. Yay! Called out Brian, and the ten strong people 
and the ten strong people lifted the skull high into the air. Underneath that, Comrade Barry Bobber was lying there as fresh as a pancake. They put the school building onto the playground. Shunt! Brian and Bianca rushed over to him. Dad! Dad, are you okay? Gushed his da tearful daughter. Sorry, Brian. I think the school is just a tiny bit too heavy for me. Nee no, nee no. Yeah, an ambulance sprang to the playground. The doctors rolled Barry Bobber up like a. Brian, Brian Bobber up like a French style cramp. So they could push him into the back of the, the back of the ambulance. Is he going to be alright? asked Brian. We should be able to knead him back into shape, replied the doctor. I hope his brain hasn't been damaged in some way. I don't think there's any chance of that, replied the girl. Just as the ambulance doors were about to close, Barry the crap sat up on the stretcher and addressed his father's strong people. Oh no, no, not the brain spark, he began. But I hope you t I've taught you all an important lesson today. What? Teach us! We want to do, replied all the strong men. Well, no, I know this voice. I may not be the boy's spark, but I remember this. Re never try to lift this school building above your head, declared Barry. There was sense of him. Before all the strong men and one strong woman broke into applause. <laughs> well said, clever man! Brian smiled. You'll always be my brightest spark, Dad. The brightest spark of my life, and my, of light in my life. The man looked close to tears. Thanks. Next time I'll try to use my brain, he said, pointing to his chest. Brian didn't have the heart to tell him that his brain was actually in his head. And as the ambulance doors closed, Barry Bobber smiled and waved goodbye with his huge flat hand. There we go, that was Brian Bo Barry Bobber from Dear Ones, The World's Worst Parents. And I'll be back tomorrow with a, on New Year's Day with another video. So long and thanks for watching.